check out this transformation. He went from looking like this to this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another true tutorial. This is how my client walked in. We're gonna be doing a big chop today. So to make sure we can blend everything in smoothly, I'm gonna start the cut at the top. I'm facing my client towards the mirror right now, and he's gonna guide me with what length he wants to cut off. Just keep in mind, since we're stretching out his hair, you gotta remind your client that the hair is gonna coil back up as soon as he washes it or puts conditioner in it. So I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer than where he wanted it to be because when it coils up, it's gonna shrink. And I'm just using that first cut that I did as a guide. And I'm just gonna stretch out the hair and try to follow that length evenly all the way through around. You don't gotta worry about being very perfect right now because we are going to pick this out later on and touch up our work. So I'm really just freehanding this, no special measuring or anything. And that's a skill that we need to develop as a barber to be able to really measure everything with your eye, just pure vision. Especially if we're cutting curly textured hair like his, I never use the comb and stretch it out and cut it as if it was straight hair. Not only would we waste time, but the hair would look uneven at the end once it's styled. So this is how I usually always approach curly textured hair. And like I stated before, don't worry if it's uneven, we're gonna touch up our work later on and you'll see just how. And before you finish the entire head all the way around, be sure to show your client the mirror. You want them to be happy with that length and just remind them that it's going to shrink once it's washed. We're trying to achieve a rounder shape, so I don't really want the size to be longer than the top. We will need to cut a little bit more on the sides just to give it that round effect. We don't want the top of his head looking like an oval. We wanna to try to keep it as round as possible. We can already see a drastic difference in his haircut already from when he first walked in. So now to double check our work, what I like to do personally is pick out the hair as much as possible. And take your time with this, make sure everything is picked out. Curly hair can be stubborn sometimes, so just go at it for a minute or two. Try to pick it out deep, like from the scalp area. And wherever you see it being coiled up the most, pick it out there a lot. So what I'm gonna do now is cut freehand with my clippers. And I'm just gonna shape this up as neat as possible. At this point, we're not trying to take off much length. We're just double checking our work and making sure everything is uniform. And right here, I do have the lever completely closed. If you're not comfortable doing this step, you could try it with the lever open, but I highly recommend it. Right after this, I did shampoo and condition my client's hair just so we can really see those curls. Unfortunately, I was a little bit tight on time, so I didn't record this, but this is how it looks like now after being washed. With this texture hair, you don't want to really rub the towel because it will get frizzy. So I'm just patting it and squeezing it dry. And after this, if you see any areas where it's a little bit longer, I'll just touch it up with the shears. The areas that are shorter, like the hairline, or we're gonna be fading, I do want that to be as dry as possible just so it won't mess with the clippers i noticed some areas that were a little bit longer so that's why i'm going right behind it with some shears and that's how i find it easier for me to cut big lengths of curly hair i'm not saying this is the correct way to do it or the way you should do it it's just what works for me now we can start the fading process. I will be putting in my ball line right where that C-cut begins because he wanted a high taper. And right away, we're gonna clean up that area right beneath that and ball it out. I'll go right behind that with the foil shaver. This is going to add a nicer transition to our blend and make the haircut last a little bit longer. 
the first guard I'm going to be using is the one and a half guard and I'm going in with the lever completely closed. I'm going to go up about two fingers high. Right away I'll open the lever halfway, go up a quarter inch and finally open the lever all the way and go up another quarter inch. Once I complete all three lever positions, I'll go back and repeat those steps until I see a smooth transition. What we're doing here is establishing the highest point of our blend. Try to memorize that three-step lever technique. It's the same system we'll use throughout the entire process. Now that that's complete, I'm going to take off that guard and go up about a finger's width with the lever completely open. I'm not sure if you can notice, but his hair does grow to the side a bit. So that's why I'm cutting at an angle to make sure I'm cutting against the grain. And I go over it a few times just to make sure everything's being cut consistently. I'll put on my 0.5 guard and I'll start with the lever completely closed, go up a quarter inch. I'll open that lever halfway, go up another quarter inch. And finally, I'll open that lever completely and just flick out. The most important thing you gotta do using this technique is flicking out. Doing that is what allows us to only use two guards. And since this is a tighter space, I am using the corners of the clipper. This allows us to be a little bit more careful and precise with the area we're targeting and not accidentally cut another area. And remember, once I do all three lever positions, I go back and repeat them just to touch up any areas that I missed so we can get a smooth transition. Once that's complete, I'll switch over to a clipper that has a slower motor and I'll start with the lever completely closed using no guards and I'm really just going to flick out that bottom bald line. Remember we're not trying to create any other guidelines we're just trying to blend them out. I'll open that lever halfway flick out another quarter inch and you should already see this pretty blended. Opening the lever completely is just going to allow us to detail the area above that and give us even a cleaner blend. If you notice I do use the corners a lot. That's how I can accurately get those darker areas. I put my clipper at an angle and try to focus on the area that I'm looking at. Most of the time, you're not gonna blend it out completely the first time around, so you always gotta go back and double check your work. And whatever my clipper doesn't get, I'll go right behind it with the trimmer since this does have a smaller and thinner blade. It allows me to be more precise. However, if you don't feel comfortable yet using this technique so high up with the trimmer, I suggest you start low and working your way up. You have to be very light handed with that because you could accidentally leave a little patch if you're too heavy handed. So now we're going to move over to the back and we're going to apply everything we did with the side taper for the neck taper. All the steps are the same. We're just working in a different area now. So I'm going to put on my one and a half guard with the lever completely closed and go up about two fingers high. After doing that, I'll open that lever halfway, flick out a quarter inch, and finally I'll get to the lever completely open and flick out another quarter inch. Just try to not go so high with this area because we don't want any overhang from his curls. We're going to do it in a scooping motion so that that curls just fall on top of the blend. And remember to always comb the client's hair as you're cutting because with this texture the hair does move a little bit with the guards so try to put it back in place with the comb every few strokes once i see a smooth base i'll take off the guard and go in with the lever completely open and just go up about a finger's width just right above that ball line that we created remember to scoop out we don't want to create such a harsh line at the top so we can blend it out easier for our next step. The last guard we'll be using is a 0.5 guard and same thing following that same pattern with the lever completely closed flicking out until we get to the lever all the way open and this should blend out that line. Remember the higher we're going the less pressure we're applying you need to flick out is extremely important. And remember try to keep in mind where it is that we cut with the one and a half guard you don't want to go above that. So you got to keep a visual of it in your head. And same thing with this card. Once we start blending out that bottom ball line, you don't want to go above this area because then eventually we're going to end up bringing the fade up higher and we're going to have to fix it and we don't want to do any of that. So it's better if you're just careful the first time around. It will take some time to get used to, but I promise once you nail this technique down, it's going to save you so much time.
Now we're gonna blend out that bottom bald line with the lever completely closed using no guards. And remember, you gotta flick it out. I'm applying little pressure as I go higher. Honestly, you should already see this blend out when you get to the lever halfway open. When it's completely open, all we're gonna do is just touch up that little area above that using the corners. Try avoid using the entire blade. When you use the entire blade, that's when sometimes you end up bringing it much higher. And for the sake of this video, I won't be showing how I do the other side. Also because I was running behind in schedule, so I do apologize. But you would just apply the same steps that we did on the other side. Here, I am just lining up around the ear. I find it easier for me when I line up around the ear first and then move down towards the neck. It's really just a preference, but remember to not bring it in so much. We just want to make that line sharp. We're not trying to change the shape of it. And you can already see this dude feeling himself and we still haven't even lined it up, but he's just doing too much. He's also a barber though. If you guys want to check out his page, he goes by Barber Rail. You see, as soon as we get to the lineup, he stopped goofing around as he should but i'm going to trim this down a little bit with the one and a half guard with the lever completely closed this will allow us to get a sharper line i'm not applying too much pressure especially since his line is a little bit thin and here i'm using a razor comb i find this very useful to get those stubborn hairs that just won't lay down and to hold everything in place i did apply a little bit of spritz on a paper towel and just rub it in I'm gonna let that dry and then just hit it lightly with some soft hold hairspray. If you prep your lineups and take a little bit extra time, I promise you, you'll see a difference. And I'm just gonna allow this to dry. We don't wanna start a lineup if it's humid or wet, it just won't cut properly. So make sure it's as dry as possible. So I'm gonna start the lineup right in the center as I usually do. And I'm just going to go to the side little by little. You really have to keep in mind that we're creating a straight line on a round canvas. So it's very important for you to follow the shape of the head. Otherwise, your line won't look straight. As we get closer to the temples, you can see that his forehead does curve in a little bit. So that's going to force us to curve in the line as well. Just really try to angle your client's head at eye level with you because that's the angle he's going to be seeing when he looks in the mirror. I find that to be the best position for you to get a straight line. Like I stated before, we're not trying to change the shape of this. We're just trying to sharpen it up. Like where you hear everywhere on social media or in barbershops, don't push the line. You don't want to do that. Try to keep it natural, but sharp. And remember to use the mirror behind you. It's a very important tool. The mirror will help you see if the line is straight or not. My client did request for enhancements. This is going to help fill in those lighter areas and give the illusion of a fuller line. Remember, enhancements should complement the cut. They shouldn't make the cut. So if you're still struggling a bit to get a nice blend and a sharp line, try to stay away from enhancements until you can achieve that naturally. Also, really quick, guys. All the tools I use in this video were from Gamma and Stylecraft. If you're in the market for any tools, be sure to use my discount code CHOOCH. It's valid on both websites. I highly recommend them. You can get them and save some money at the same time. I'm just finishing up with some razor work, double checking my work, making sure everything is sharp. And just to enhance those curls, I'm gonna use some foam mousse. I'm gonna use a good amount, trying to not be stingy with it. It's gonna add good moisture to the hair and make his hair coil up. And same thing that I said before, you don't wanna rub any curly hair, it's gonna make it frizzy. So I just try to pat it in there, kinda just squeeze it, lock it in the hair. And I'm just trying to distribute this evenly as much as I can. To help the curling and drying process, I will be using a blow dryer with a diffuser at medium heat and kind of just position his hair to make everything look the same height. And YouTube, we are getting to the end of this video. I really hope you were able to learn something. This is the final look. You know, it's pretty crazy to me how much of a difference hair can make. If you learned anything in this video, I appreciate if you would leave it a like, 
If you're not subscribed already, be sure to do so for more future content. And if you end up using this technique, let me know how it went for you in the comments below. Or if you got any questions, I'll try to answer as many as I can. What do you guys think about the transformation? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to share this to a barber friend or a co-worker. There's no need to overcomplicate the process of cutting hair. But anyways, be sure to check out all of my other social media accounts. I'm pretty active on those. And as always, stay blessed and peace out.